Welcome back everyone. In this video I want to talk about bump textures. First of all we need to understand what a bump texture is. Now in previous videos we've used a nice little uh, brick texture to demonstrate some things. And you probably noticed along the way that although if I do say so myself it's a pretty nice little texture, it didn't really look like bricks. It looked like a picture of bricks on a somewhat shiny flat surface. To get that kind of realism is where we bring bump textures or normal textures in. This time we're going to talk about bump textures. Bump textures are the legacy to normal maps where they used a grayscale to determine height. Now how does that work? Basically what happens is when our simulated light in our scene calculates where the light's going with the way we've been doing it before, the light's been coming down, it's been hitting our flat plane, and it's been bouncing off, simulating what light would do on a flat surface. A bump texture allows us to change the calculations of that light. And when it hits that bump texture, it reads it, and the bump texture says, well, if it hits here, bounce this way. If it hits here, bounce off this way. And we simulate shadow, and we simulate extra geometry. Now let's understand how this works. I'm going to bring up my Photoshop and we have that texture that we used previously. Now the easiest way to get a bump map is to grayscale a texture. So I'd already done that by just lowering the saturation, saturation down to nothing and I ended up with something like this. And I saved that out as my brick bump map. I also created a normal map version and if you're completely new to this you may not know what this is at all. Normal maps are kind of what bump maps became and they're, they're what's regularly used in game engines and such now. And we will look at that some more further down the line. But the way they work is more or less the same. So I saved out both of these and I also have my texture for my bricks and now we'll take a look at what bump mapping can do. Alright so we'll go into Blender and as you see I've created a plane like we had last time so go ahead and set this up. I move my light so it's a little closer here in this corner just so that we'll be able to see things a little bit better. I also increase the strength of my light up to four. And that's over here in our data. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select our plane. I'm going to create a new material. This is all very familiar. We'll call this brick wall. And we'll do a texture. And we'll call this bricks. We're on image or movie. We'll go down and open this up. And I will grab my brick texture. And I'll make the changes that I know we need to make. I'll go to my image sampling and I'll flip it. And I'm going to go ahead and do generated. And we'll go ahead and hit F12 and render. And like I said, it's pretty decent looking texture, but you can tell by the light coming off it that it just looks flat and kind of shiny. Now, the shiny doesn't really have anything to do with bump maps or normal maps. That's in our material, and we just haven't bothered with that until now. So I'm going to go back to my material, and below my diffuse we have specular. And by default, my spe specular is at 50%. Basically that means I'm halfway between no shine whatsoever and completely glossy. If I were to take this up and render, you'd see how shiny that gets. I want a little bit of specular, but I mean just very little. I'm going to take it down to like 0.05. We'll do another render. And that's better. I might even go down a little further. But everything does have some level of shine to it, albeit very little sometimes. 
that's not bad. All right, so back in our textures, we have our brick texture. We've got that all set up and ready to go. So now, I'm going to create another texture. We'll call this one Brick Bump. And I will go down and I will open this up. And I will grab my Brick Bump texture. And I will bring this in. Alright, now we know we have to change some things just for it because we want it to match our other texture. So I am going to flip it. And I am going to go to Generated. But now if we render, something happens. We get our gray texture instead of our color texture. That's because down in our influence, we're still basing this off of the diffuse color. So even though our bricks are in that diffuse color, we're going to take our bump map and we're going to uncheck that. We're going to come down to geometry and click normal. And right now it's at 1, so we'll see what we get. Alright, we definitely get some uh, faked geometry, but it seems backwards. Our bricks are all inset. That's because our when I created our bump map, you can see that the grout in between is really the lightest part of the map. And a good general rule of thumb is to remember your D's. Darker is deeper. So if we want that brick to be sticking out and the grout to be inset, then the grout would need to be the darker bit. Now we could invert our map and save it, and that's a fine way to go about it. But we can change it right here in Blender. We can take our normal, which is at 1 for strength, and we're just going to make that a negative 1. And we'll try re-rendering. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. Our bricks are a little plastically looking. I could probably take the spec down just a hair, but that's not what we're dealing with right now. So that gives you an idea of what's going on. Our light comes down, and because we're in a bump map dealing with normals, that map looks at all of the pixels and says, from black to white, and everywhere in between, when this light calculates on this, the different shades are going to tell the light to go in different directions. And so we end up having one single poly, but it looks like we have thousands of polys, so we've individually modeled these bricks. We're getting some shadow, and we're getting some highlights, and that's all the effect of bump mapping. All right. Now we'll try a couple other things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera around. Right now we're here. So I'm going to come oh, somewhere over here. Hit Control Alt Zero. Just bring my camera there and re render. And you can see. Our shadow is still rendering over on the same sides it was previously because we didn't move our light. So our bump map is still telling everything to calculate correctly. And the different colors that were in my bump map are still producing different levels of extrusion for my brick. But again, if we look, this is a perfectly flat plane. There's only one polygon. There's no geometry whatsoever. So all of this is just faked in the system. Now let's go up and try checking out what it would look like with a normal map. So I'm going to create a new one. And we're going to call this Brick Norm. And we'll go fetch that. And I'm going to turn off my brick bump, because I have this one. We'll come down, we'll flip it, go to Generated, and we'll see what happens. 
Well, once again, we didn't change our color. So we're going to undo that. And we're going to go to normal. And we'll change this to negative 1 like we did for the others. And we'll see what we get. Okay, not bad, and normal map certainly giving us some extra detail, but it's a little funky. And that's because it's a normal map rather than a bump map, and so we need to tell Blender that. <clears throat> so if we are working with normal maps, we're going to come up to our image sampling. We're going to check normal map. We're going to leave it on tangent. If you try object world, you'll get very unsatisfactory results, and that's because those are meant to do something else. Tangent normal maps are the ones that just produce this look in our view. So we'll try re-render again. And this time it is reading our normal map correctly. So our negative one's not working. So we'll put that back to one. And try render again. And there we go. Now this one you could argue it's, uh, it, well you can't argue, it's certainly less pronounced. You could argue it's a little more realistic. That uh, we don't have bricks, you don't usually see a brick wall where bricks are sticking half the distance of the brick out. So we can try moving our camera again. Just to see what we get. Control out zero. And we'll render. And we see we do get a pretty decent looking, pretty decent looking bump. You will notice between the bump map and the normal map, the normal map has a lot more detail in the brick. And that's one of the reasons that it's uh, the evolution of bump maps is the level of detail that you can get. You can do it with a bump map, but it's going to take a lot more work. So we'll uh, we'll turn this off and go back to our brick bump and we'll try rendering again just so we can see the difference. And you see that really gets pumped out. So it looks like there's the geometry sticks out more. But again, you kind of you kind of lose some of the realism between doing that. But there are many things, um, especially with the Blender internal renderer. Bump maps can often work a little bit better, especially if you do need the geometry to be particularly pronounced. It works very good with uh, cartoony type work and things like that, Pixar-ish looking stuff. You can do very nice work that way. All right, so that's given us a pretty good idea of how bump maps and normal maps work. This is uh, particular to the bump maps. But just remember, uh, you have to work with your normal geometry down here and get rid of your color diffuse. And that should just about do it. So on that note, I'll see everyone in the next video.